Hello, I'm Christian Aguilera Sandoval, your Flojo application scientist. Today I'm going to show you how to use TSNI in Flojo V10. T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding, or TSNI, is a dimensionality reduction algorithm for nonlinear data representation that creates a low dimensional distribution or a map of high dimensional data. This makes TSNI a more suitable tool in comparison to other dimensionality reduction algorithms such as PCA that are linear and thus unsuitable for flow cytometry data since it can't faithfully represent nonlinear relationships. A TSNI map is composed of groupings or islands of phenotypically similar cells from one or multiple samples. A TSNI map's purpose is to help visualize the general structure and heterogeneity of a data set as well as to provide insight of important differences between samples. As shown in this illustration, we have a TSNI map with multiple islands as shown here by my cursor, or this same map demonstrating the different cell types demonstrated by different colors, or also telling us that this TSNI map is composed of 27 different subjects. Okay, let's go do some uh, TSNI in an actual Flojo workspace. Here, I've taken the liberty to pre-gate this data set to up to CD3 positive T cells, as shown here. First, we select a population we wish to explore further using the TSNI space. In this data set, I want to interrogate the different T cell subsets within this sample. Next, we click on workspace, followed by our TSNI button. Next, we select the compensated parameters of interest. Note, in this case, I did not select viability or CD3 parameter, and that's because I'm already working on cells that are viable and CD3 positive, thus eliminating the need to check for viability and CD3 heterogeneity. I will describe all of the tunables while, while the algorithm is doing its calculations. But for now, let me click on run and let the algorithm do its thing. Also, please go ahead and name the run name as you would like, okay? So we could try this and put as demo. I'm going to click um, let these options here and I'll come back to it and click on run. So while this is running, let's open this dialog box again. And like I promised, let's revisit now how to set the tunables using the TSNI dialog box. First, ensure that you've selected auto or opti TSNI. Flojo's opti TSNI's code has been optimized to finish around 10 times faster than other TSNI software. It can produce reliable results even past 1 million events, which is the current limit for most TSNI software. At CIDO 2019, Flojo presented a TSNI of 40 million events. That way you have an idea that we don't really have that limitation. Lastly, the TSNI result you get has been optimized largely based on the Kolbeck Liebler divergence. So you don't have to run several TSNI plots at different iterations, learning rates, and or perplexities. Therefore, you do not need to change any of these tunables, more specifically, the iteration, perplexity, or learning rate sections. For more detailed explanation of what these tunables are and how they refer to your TSNI, please read the manuscript as referenced in this citation. However, there are two choices that need to be made, and those are regarding the algorithms that you wish to run your TSNI on. First, let's visit the KNN algorithm. And this one is composed of the exact and approximate ANOI. And now, this is exactly how it sounds. You either want to run an exact or approximate measurement of the distance of neighboring cells. Exact takes longer to run as you would expect, However, TSNI plots of 5 million events or less 
are very similar between the two algorithms. For the gradient algorithm, so for now let's just approximate. For the gradient algorithm, the choices are Barnes, Hutton, FFT, or Fitz Knee. FFT uses the Fourier transforms for faster computation of repulsive forces approximation. Hence, it runs faster with largely the same results as Barnes Hut. All in all, I would recommend running TSNI with a knowing and FFT for TSNI plots of 5 million events or less, like in this example where we are only running it on 100,000 events. For larger TSNI plots, I would personally, I personally would recommend using Exact and Barnes Hut. So now let's close this dialog window and see where we are with our prog progress bar to our TSNI. As we can see, it is just about finished and it's taken less than four minutes for us to run 100,000 events, which before it would have taken several hours to have run. So now that we have this TSNI map, let's explore each island by selecting the color axis first, like so, and then selecting from the drop-down menu, a parameter of interest. For instance, let's see where our CD4 cells are. Well, they're denoted by this red as shown by this heat map down here, which illustrates the fluorescence intensities. Now let's see where our CD8s are at. Well, we'll do the drop-down and select CD8. That's these cells up here. Lastly, why don't we ask where our interferon gamma producing cells? We select interferon gamma, and here we go. So this is a very quick way of trying and interrogating your T-SNI space. Now, how about adding your T-SNI space to your layout editor? Well, let's open our layout editor, and let's create a new space. We select the T-SNI node, uh, the, the node of interest that we want to drag in, this case being our CD3. We're gonna click, drag, and drop onto our layout editor. And there you go. However, what about if we wanna choose the visualization and remove the axes? Well, you simply double click the dialog box. On specify, we're going to select pseudo color and on annotations, we'll go ahead and remove all of the axis labels since we are working in the high dimensionality space. We press okay, and there you go. Now, for an in-depth analysis of your TSNI plot using our clustering algorithms, please visit us at Flojo University. It's been a pleasure, and thank you for watching and joining me at Flojo University. Thank you, and see you next time. Goodbye.